We're here at a back canal. This is fresh water, but it has also salt water coming in from the Gulf periodically, so we should find some brackish water. Gary Lafleur, can you tell us why that's important in the estuary? Well, uh, lower salinity water to me is um, is what's characteristic of an estuary. You got certain types of animals that live in, in high salinities, and those those would be more pelagic animals. But what we find here in an estuary are just the few animals that really do well in, in something like half seawater salinity, something like 10 to 15 to 25. And not only that, but then it's a special group of animals that can, um, they're, they're not sensitive to, to big fluctuations in salinity. So in deep seawater, it's always really high salinity, 35 parts per thousand. But here you can go within an hour from five parts per thousand if, if a big wave comes in to maybe all the way up to 20 parts per thousand. And then when a big rain comes, you go all the way back down to five parts per thousand. So it's uh, what's characteristic of an area like this is, is only these animals that can tolerate big salinity fluxes. Let's take a salinity rating. Okay, we have two different types of uh, instruments here. We have the, the, maybe the more traditional, and that's this refractometer. So it measures the refractive index of water. And uh, these are, although they're more traditional, they're still pretty expensive, so you always have to be careful with them. And by reading the meniscus, by uh, looking into this instrument, I read something like um, about 17, maybe 18 parts per thousand. And then Kerry's looking at the, uh, he's using a YSI salinometer. And um, this is a, an electronic method, and actually it's measuring the, the conductance, and it, it transfers that into uh, salinity. And looks like I'm getting a reading pretty close to what you got, Dr. LaFleur, 17.5 parts per thousand. The, the thing that's, that's really uh, different about Louisiana's estuary is how far our intermediate brackish waters go compared to other, other marsh systems. We have this great, huge expanse of low salinity water. Right. Whereas a lot of coasts just go from fresh water to, right. There's a very, to ocean water. Very steep gradient in, in these other estuaries. That's one of the reasons we're so productive is because of the vast size of, a, of our estuary. Absolutely. So we got something important here. We got fish for, for the big fish to eat. But then we also have some fish that are young. Perch. Of fish that are, that are gonna be a fish that we eat. You know what this guy is? Some fish. This is the Atlantic croaker. You know, crustaceans are a big part of our life here in Louisiana. And uh, what a lot of people know about are this crustacean here. This is the crawfish. We don't find it much in the estuary, but it's up estuary. And so it's connected to, to the bottom of the estuary. It lives in the water that's flowing down into the, to the salt water to, to make what we call an estuary. And so we eat a lot of these guys. And then another decapod crustacean that's a big part of a, a healthy estuary is what we, what we got here. So come a little closer. We got a, a crab there, a crab there, and a crab here. These are all fiddler crabs, but in Louisiana, we uh, have kind of a, a special um, closeness to the animals uh, in the estuary, and one of the one of the um, ways that we show that is by giving them special names. So, what do y'all call the, these little guys? You don't call them fiddler crabs. Tulalus. So everybody in Louisiana on the on the coast here thinks of these as tulalus. This is Yucca minax, Yucca longicignalis, and a girl Yucca longicignalis. So only the boys have a big claw. But one of the things that uh, I like about the Tulalus is that just in the same way that the, that the marsh is sort of um, oftentimes forgotten as being an important part of, of an ecosystem, the Tulalus are often forgotten as to how important they are to, to the marsh. And, and what they, they sort of act like the earthworms do on, on the, the, the terrestrial part of the mainland. The Tulalus kind of cultivate a Spartina marsh. So we have behind us a big Spartina marsh. Well, who planted that Spartina marsh? Well, nobody planted it, but, but who's kind of looking after it? And that's the Tulalus here. They, they pick up the sand and the mud and they aerate it and they, they eat from it and they make little mounds with it. And they keep the, the marsh that the Spartina lives in, they keep that aerated. And the other thing that's special about these is their eye stalks. They've become a very important biomedical model. People use their eye stalks to do endocrine uh, experiments and some of the greatest work uh, from that was done right here in Louisiana by Milton Fingerman at Tulane University. So they're important for, for, from a research perspective as well as an ecological perspective. That's the Tulalu. 
Then I have uh, another, almost like a Tulalu that people hardly ever see. This is, this is a dead one, it's been preserved. But this is the great land crab. Hardly anybody's ever seen this giant Tulalu. Have y'all ever seen it? It's very secretive. It uh, burrows up underneath the, the uh, trees and up underneath the mangroves. And every now and then it comes out. It looks like a giant Tulalu. It's called Cortisoma. It's the great land crab. It looks kind of like a stone crab. Yeah, it kind of does. It's one of the most secret crabs of Louisiana. People hardly ever see it. But at some times of the year, they come out to lay their eggs into the water. And so every now and then you find great land crabs coming across the, the, the road and they become roadkill. And that's when people bring them into us. But they also have these great big eye stalks here. And this is one of their important endocrine organs. It's the same, similar that, to, to the eye stalk that you can see on this crab here. The same eye stalk that you can see here. And so uh, these are sort of important from a comparative point of view as well as from a physiological point of view. Okay, so this is something else that we find here in the, the estuary. And, and just like fiddle crabs, you have to look hard for these. These are Gukinzia demissa, and they're all at the bottom of Spartina leaves, Spartina roots. So this is the ribbed mussel. And uh, it's just another one of those important physio physiology models that also are an important ecological uh, component of, of the estuary. These have sort of a, um, a symbiotic relationship with Spartina, as well as uh, the, the yucca crabs. And you can teach students about how species in the estuary are, uh, are interrelated and, and depend on each other. This is a nice model for that. It's not just Spartina out there. It's Spartina with Gukinzia demissa, the ribbed mussel at, at, at the base of its roots. And it's also Spartina that's surrounded by fiddler crabs like this that are living underneath the, uh, the Spartina canopy. And so it, it gives them a, an appreciation for the interrelatedness of, of species in, in the estuary. Now we're ready to find out whether there is a salinity difference from the back canal and the ocean itself. What'd you get, Dr. Lafleur? In the back. Earlier today we had 17 parts per thousand. Uh, on the front of the beach it's about 27 parts per thousand, so that's quite a difference. Quite a difference. Thank you.